In KiCad 7, 8 minutes is about all it takes to go from an idea to a schematic, a circuit board, and a 3D model. This only applies to the most basic design, but it can be done, and we're going to do it today. It all starts with knowing how to navigate between KiCad's features, and knowing how to navigate around the canvas. Now, there's a lot to cover today, so if you haven't already, open up the application, and if you need to adjust the language, you can do so using Preferences Set Language. If you installed the optional theme from Part 1, your experience is going to look like this. Otherwise, this is the default theme. This is only a color swap, so don't consider it mandatory. Inside the main application, navigate to File, New Project from Template. We are going to use an Arduino as our template, and when the work is completed, it will be able to plug onto a board just like this one. Inside the Project Template selector, choose the option for Arduino Uno. Click OK, then you can select a directory to store this project to. Give the name some thought, and if it helps, letters, numbers, dashes, and underscores are all valid characters. Click Save, and you're ready to proceed. Now it's time to open the schematic editor. Our project files are now loaded on the left-hand side, so let's start with the item ending in .keycad underscore sch. Give it a few seconds to load, and after it loads, you should notice that it's already populated graphics and symbols on the upper left-hand side. This is your schematic workspace, but I prefer to think of it as a canvas. At this point, let's take some time to practice how to move around the area. If you're using a mouse, then you can zoom in and out, by rotating the scroll wheel. You can do the same by pressing F1 and F2. Go ahead and zoom in until you can start to see a dot grid appear. Move your cursor around, and you should notice two objects following your pointer device. The arrow will follow your pointer device exactly. The crosshairs, on the other hand, are constrained to the XY grid. This grid is how we regulate the spacing between objects. And if you look to the left of the canvas, you can show or hide the grid by clicking this button. Take note that this will only cloak the grid, and it will not stop the grid from working. Below this button we can see three additional buttons, and these buttons here are how we select the unit of measure. I in is short for inch, and one inch equals 1000 mils. You can also think of an inch as 25.4 millimeters. Many electronic devices, and the symbols that represent them, will have their features spaced 0.1 inches apart. This is a carryover from the work of Fairchild Semiconductor, Texas Instruments, and the Department of Defense. And this is why the default grid spacing is probably going to be set to 50 mils. And again, that is 0.05 inches. These units and the grid system are critical, because when you need to connect wires to symbols, the pins and the wires you're connecting need to converge on the exact same location. The symbols in the default libraries are also based on the 50 mil convention, so I highly recommend keeping your grid set to 50 mils. If you accidentally change the grid, you can get it back by pressing N as in November, and this will cycle through all the possible grids. To adjust the zoom so that every component and text is on the screen, you can press Ctrl and Home at the same time. Or if you're on Mac, think of it as Command and Home. Pressing the Home key by itself will view the entire frame. This means you're basically viewing the entire printable area. On some rare occasions, you'll need to clear away old graphics from the canvas. You can do that by pressing F5, by clicking this button in the top center, or by navigating to View Refresh. Either way, it's all the same. You can pan the view in any direction by holding the middle mouse button, and then you can drag the mouse anywhere you want. You can also use the right mouse button. To pan left and right, hold the Control or Command key, and then rotate the scroll wheel up or down. To pan vertically, hold down the Shift key, and once again rotate the wheel. Fair note, if you have come here from a different schematic editor, or perhaps another EDA, you can adjust these hotkeys any way you want. But that topic is for the next video. For now, let's try to jump into the PCB editor. Near the top of the screen, look for an icon, and when you mouse over it, it is going to read out Open PCB Inboard Editor. When you click on this button, it will open up the PCB editor, and then it will automatically locate and load the .keycad underscore PCB file that is associated with the project. Give it a few moments to load, and when it does, you're going to see a top-down view of the template PCB. We can best think of this view as being split up into multiple layers. We have the edge cut layers, which are going to define the overall shape of the board. We have front and back copper, where CU is short for copper, technically cuprum, 
and this will be the layer where you can find your traces, vias, and many of the other features that will conduct electricity. Drill locations are exactly what they sound like. We can even find other non-electrical layers, such as the silk screens, fabrication layer, and even a layer for comments. When we clicked on that earlier button in the schematic editor, the netlist for that design was automatically imported into this current workspace on the screen. We can even find a few lines that indicate that something isn't connected yet. Let's try to pan and zoom again, and by using the mouse and the keyboard, we can see that zooming and panning work exactly like they did in the schematic editor. If you need to locate a string or a component, you can press F3 or press Ctrl F, and this will let you search for anything you want. Finally, let's check out the 3D model. We can do this by selecting the PCB editor, then you can choose to either press Alt 3, or you can navigate to View 3D Viewer. Give it a moment, and if your system and graphics card are configured correctly, you should be able to see the interactive 3D model. Once again, you can zoom in and out by rotating the scroll wheel. You can press Home to put everything in view. Middle mouse and drag will adjust the view. Rotate by left-clicking and dragging. Otherwise, you can press X, Y, and Z to look at various faces. F will flip the board, and R will restore default settings. Close down the 3D model, and once again in the PCB editor, navigate to File, Fabrication Outputs. This is going to give you a list of every possible file and option that KiCad can produce so you can have your work produced by an outside lab. Gerber files contain those layers that we saw earlier. Drill files are available in multiple formats. And by the way, if you're unsure of what to use, you can simply call the board manufacturer on the phone or email them. Component placement is only useful if you plan to have that outside factory solder the components on the board for you. Finally, we have IPC D-356. This is a industry standard for sharing your netlist. You can think of it as an instruction set for continuity testing. So that was a pretty comprehensive exercise. To recap, we have just opened a template. We've learned how to pan and zoom across the schematic editor, the PCB editor, and the 3D model. And finally, we have a rough idea of how to generate those fabrication outputs so we can go to mass production. If you run into trouble or if you have questions, definitely let me know in the comments because this feedback does tend to help other viewers. Coming up in part three, which again is a optional video, we will custom configure KiCad using those preferences I mentioned earlier.